There's a lot of different types of bait to catch, a lot of different ways to catch it. Before you try to learn the fishery, I don't care where you live, before you try to learn that fishery, learn the bait and you will have no problem with the fishery. Presented by Yellowfin with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. <laughs> Our job, what we do, is all about bait. You know it. I mean, that's how the morning starts. Everybody every morning says, Steve, Captain Steve, uh, what are we going to fish for? And I, well, I can't tell you that because it's going to depend on what bait we catch. Uh, the bait dictates where we're going, where we're going to end up. You know, if I'm going after Speedos or Ballyhoo, it means we're going to end up in the deep water. And if we're in the deep water, guess where we're going to fish? In the deep water. But if I'm going way out in the Gulf to catch Peltzers or something, then we're going to fish in the Gulf. So it's really, the bait is everything. The, bait, the morning starts with where you're going to catch it, right. what you're going to do with it, and what kind of fish you're actually going to go after. And, you know, doing it every day, you, you can start to follow the, the bait. Uh, find the pelicans, pretty much know where they're supposed to be, and then if they're not there, you know where to go the next bait. You know, you're going to know whether they're inshore or offshore, just moving east or west on any given day, because you got to have them. And if, if it takes five hours to catch them, that's five hours you're not fishing. And uh, so that's, that's not possible. 12 o'clock. Straight ahead. You coming into deep water now? All right, here's what I want to do. The bank that's up ahead of us, I want to hug that joker because we got that north wind. Yeah, I believe that'd be great. Once that dens, we're done. From this high up, that's going to throw the net down fast. All right, let it go, let it go. Let it you go. catch it fresh every day. I catch it fresh every day if I can, but I have three charter boats going out and two or three other charter boats that need to bait too. So we'll go in the mornings for fresh, and then we're gonna go, as soon as we're done cleaning the fish the other day, while the boat's getting washed, we're gonna go catch some more the night before and put them in big cages. So that we guarantee we have something to throw to a fish in the next morning, because we can't, in these four hour half day trips, we can't be spending an hour catching bait. Uh, so, you know, I've got, I spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars building big cages and leave them all over the island to hold pilchards uh, overnight and goggle ice that we catch at night and blue runners and the stuff that we that will cage up well cigar minnows sardines and on our pretty days when we're not booked i'm going to catch cigar minnows and sardines with quills and we're not going to handle them we're going to we're going to dehook them never touch them and then one at a time which i know you hate i'll never let you transfer bait on my boat ever but just write that down <laughs> but when, when we take no, if the, we if take the goal the time, is to keep him forever one at a time yeah if and the then, goal is, do you and, see me? And then I, we have to feed them. Then we have to feed them. Yeah. So, but it's all part of what we do yeah. every day. I like catching bait better than catching fish because once I catch the bait, I'm going to catch the fish. Don't mind me. I'm just a little hoop net sliding back under you guys. I think we're out of here, buddy. We got plenty of bait. We put me on here. the fish, Captain. Come on, put me on the fish. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Simrad, brought to you by the new Simrad NSS Sport touchscreen display. Mercury, and by Costa Sunglasses, King Sailfish Mounts, and Tailwalker Charters. Our similarity is we, get, we wake up every morning to catch fish, and we're, at the end of the day, we're both gonna catch fish. We, we totally go at it differently. Uh, Steve is on the water, in touch with everything from, from catching the bait to uh, catching the fish. It's, it's all visual, it's all one at a time. For me, it's bulk and numbers, and uh, it's two totally different styles, but at the end of the day, we're, our coolers are full. 
That's how you do it. That was a good one. <laughs> you guys, you guys are very much in tune with a larger, healthier bait for sail fishing. I'm in tune with a lot of bait and I want fresh bait every day. I don't want to have to feed it. And, and the way it starts out with me is, we're gonna look the closest spots first. Inshore, Peltridge, you know, anywhere around the marina, anywhere around the dock, along the beaches. Boom, that doesn't work. We're on the markers and the rock piles catching herring. Gotta have them, great bait. I mean, herring is probably one of the best baits out there, I believe. Uh, it's, 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 but you can't net a herring. You cannot net, you have to catch them with a rod and reel, you know, six at a time. Herring, boom. As soon as we're done with the herring, if we don't catch herring, then we're on ballyhoo. I'm on the reef catching ballyhoo. Can't get the ballyhoo or do get the ballyhoo. Oh, and just catching ballyhoos. What are you going to do? You're going to net them? It's time requirement. You're yeah. fishing four hours, eight hours. Yeah. Fishing eight hours, you got to spend a little bit of time and catch them one at a time. Fish out. Walker, you know, we always use a D hooker when we do this because you don't want to touch the bait. Obviously, take that slime and that protective coating off. A D hooker is a simple tool. You just kind of come down, and what it does is it grabs that hook, and you just shake them right off without touching them, and therefore a lot better quality bait. I'm gonna D hook these, baby. You got it, buddy. <laughs> you gonna make them in the well or what? It's a little spot. A little hole. But it's full now. What I always try to do is take 30 or 40 that are hook caught, you know, depending on how they're biting, and I throw the net and fill the well. Uh, with the other guys. Those guys aren't going to live as long as the hook caught bait. You know, you got to take care of your bait. It's very crucial. You know, if you got a tired bait out there, he's not going to get eaten. You know, it's just you need that that motion. You need that liveness, and, and that's what's going to attract the fish and ultimately get you the great bites. Um, what else am I catching? You know, then again, up to the bonitas. I mean, I got baits. My freezer is slap full of bonita because there's not a day that that boat, that charter boat of mine, pulls off that dock without two to four 15 pound bonitas in that boat ready to go because I can do it without bait with that bonita you know uh, again the other thing we have is a pinfish trap you know we start the morning out we pull a pinfish trap that thing That's can nice. have so and thing can have a piece of bait in forget it let yeah. it sit no work involved you pull that thing first thing in the morning dump it in your live well throw some more chum in it drop it back when you come back the next day it'll be full again so uh, there's a lot of different types of bait to catch a lot of different ways to catch it and uh, it's something you really need before you try to learn the fishery before you try to learn hey what's biting in, i don't care where you live north carolina new york city uh, Louisiana, before you try to learn that fishery, learn the bait and you will have no problem with the fishery. The antennas would not have made it. I I think you're falling in love with this town. I am. Hey, the easiest bait I ever gonna catch? Guaranteed. All right. Watch how, watch me work. Tell me how you catch it up here. Good morning, Billy. <laughs> Sorry we're late, got lost in the mangroves. Thank you, sir. Okay. We're sitting over at Worldwide, getting the helium and the blues. So quiet, calm over there. Walker, you pushed me off. I'm trying. They seem awfully happy. It'll be warm by January when we get cranked up in the next round of tournaments. Thank you very much. All right. I'll catch up with you later. Hey, thank you, sir. You too. All right, buddy. That's how you go bait fishing, son. Yeah, that was, that was pretty easy. <laughs> Time to go fly on kite. All right, let's do it. I don't think Walker listens very well. I think he was created to give orders. There's, there's definitely a boat out there that he should be driving. I mean, Walker runs a show on his boat. He's got a crew of six. Uh, when he comes with me, he don't listen very well. I do not take orders from anyone. Patience, man. I, I'm like, settle down. Don't put a bait in the water and don't chum. You know, because when we got two people chumming, the bait's going to disappear twice as fast. Every time I turn around, He's throwing bait out. I'm like, damn, Walker. Actually, when Steve is barking orders, first thing in the morning, it does sound just like Charlie Brown's teacher. To me, it's rah, 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 rah. And I said, yes, Steve, I'm, I'm on it.
when you do find the pilchards, see the birds bobbing, you gotta make two quick decisions. For I do. I throw two different kinds of nets. A three eighths and half inch. And that's what I'm talking about is, you know, the squares. How, how big the squares are. I my baits in the middle keys are generally large to extra large. So I, I go with a bigger mesh to sink faster and get them in and out quicker. But if I were to throw that net where you some of the baits you catch are under two inches, I would have a Christmas tree that I couldn't get the baits out from now until Christmas. Yeah. So you have to have besides uh, what you're catching, you gotta have a variety of different nets just to catch the size or type of bait. Oh, I can absolutely throw a net better than Steve. Steve, I noticed you still throw your cast net in your mouth. I, you know, that's, yep. that's the tried and true, the way everyone does it. I quit doing that a long time ago because I just wasn't comfortable with anything in my mouth. Definitely throw a net better than Scott Walker. I can make one quick adjustment. If the bait's running real real fast and I gotta throw it to the end of the rope, I'm gonna grab it closer to my knee. When it's just you know steady first thing in the morning, I'm gonna grab it right at my hip because it's gonna easily open, you know, take advantage of the whole radius of 12 foot net. You want it open 24 feet. But then again, I'm not gonna put it in my mouth. I'm gonna take a third of the net, just put it up over my shoulder, like that. And that's the, that's the back third of the net. That's where it's gonna come off last. And as it drags off my shoulder, that's what's gonna open the net. Versus you, what I think you do. Then you're gonna take what's left, half of that, hold it in your hand. Do this in your sleep nowadays, I've do a million times. But now I'm ready. I'm, if the bait's not real, real close, I'm gonna put it up on my shoulder and just relax until we start feeling it. But then, you know, then it's time to come down off, let it fly. But it, again, you're just gonna get it swinging. That thing's gonna pop just like that. I didn't throw it down the, the rope because I'd have killed that guy right there. You don't even need rope when you throw him that short. <laughs> so, but you might notice that that's a perfect circle. The, yeah. bait's, the bait's coming in the boat. Beautiful. That's What's the matter, perfect buddy? circle right there. <laughs> Well, if it was in the water, bro, it'd be open. It bounced. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to grunt and throw it to the end of the rope to impress you, obviously. Big day's moving. <laughs> hey, you can have the wet throw. All right, now I've choked way up on it because I got a bait's running hard, like you said. Right, shorten it up. Yeah, you're gonna have to really get into it. And she's downtown. Another 10 feet anyway. <laughs> All right. That's a heavy net, you know what I mean? That's still, both of those casts were perfect. Both of them, you know what I mean, opened up perfect. And, and you're up. <laughs> and that's, that's the way it goes. Put it in your mouth. All right, the most important thing, you know it. When you load that net up, walk away from the net, leave the sinkers, make sure nothing's twisted. If that thing has a twist in it anywhere, you know, you're not, gonna gonna, you're, you're not going to open the net. So that, that is number one. Number one is you look down it and you make sure that there's no twist in the net. I grab it once here. If I'm going to go distance, second time is going to be kind of low. Got down by the knee. Same thing you're doing. I'm going to put the whole thing in this hand. First lead I'm going to take. I don't even put the lead in my mouth. I just put the actual line. Lead poisoning these days, you got to stay away from that. Now, depending on if I'm going to throw far, I'm going to take more lead, which is giving me more power, more weight to yep. throw the distance. So that is a lot more than I would take if I'm just throwing close. I'm going to throw this first one far and see what we get. It's nice being tall, too, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It helps. <laughs> it sure does. But you getting over those outboards. <laughs> that was a beautiful throw, man. It's a heavy-ass net. <laughs> Yeah, you won't throw that one 10 times. No. But again, that was me attempting to throw distance on that net. It bounced. It bounced. <laughs> it did bounce. <laughs> it bounced. <laughs> that's all it's going to do, it bounced. <laughs> but at any rate, two totally different uh, that's styles. Perfect. That's a perfect circle, and that's all you can ask. And two totally different styles. Yep, same result. I'll tell you this, though. Steve throws a prettier, prettier net, but I catch more bait. The only reason Scott Walker has ever caught more bait is because I put him on it. For 30 years, I've had 4,000 pilchers in my lap every morning. He's never been on my boat once. <laughs> <laughs>
Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Seaguar, always the best fishing line. Okuma Fishing Tackle, there's no stopping Okuma. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Marine Formula Stable, for everyday optimal performance and protection. And by Spear One, Ameritrail, and Under Armour. You know, my favorite bait is the pelchard. You know, ultimately that's my go-to bait. That's what I'm gonna go after. That's what I want in the well. Now, is that bait better than any other bait? I don't think so, but it's the numbers game with me. So ultimately my favorite bait to use is the pelchard. The only other bait that I choose a lot of times is the ballyhoo when it comes to sail fishing up and shallow on the sprays. That's it for me in the Keys, you know. I will take the cigars when they're easy. I'll take the herring when I can't get the pelchers, but my number one go-to bait is the pelcher. All right, will you grab those couple of this one, man? Yeah, man. You said a couple. <laughs> this is a few, more than a couple. With a kite fishing day in, day out, you gotta have the goggle eyes, because it's, you're gonna be, if you're fishing kites, it's windy. You need them for their weight, and for just their constant action. Uh, you want to take that a little step further. You don't want to just put the hook into a goggle eye on a kite. You want to use a, a rubber band Pretty so cool that the hook is never in the bait so that when you do get foul. that good bite, it won't foul and roll into them. And it's, it freely turns, we're using circle hooks, it freely turns into the corner of the jaw and releases nice. Well, the other thing is this, Scott. If you're going to hang six baits, I want six big baits. I mean, are you going to hang six little pelchers? No. You know, because not only is it going to be less of a footprint out there in your spread, you're going to pick up all kinds of little junk fish. When you hang that goggle eye, guess what? You're not going to pick the, up the bonitas. You're not going to pick the big up... big boys are coming. Yeah, you're going to get big bites, and that's what you're looking for in this upper key stuff with these sailfish and these wahoos and these bigger kings. You're looking for a big bait for a big bite. And if you're going to hang six, you want six big ones. Me, I'm looking at the smaller stuff. Numbers is what I want. I want all the bait I can get. I want to carry as much as I can. See, I can carry twice as many this big than I can carry this big. So to me, ultimately... That's excellent math. Yeah, I want, you know... My dad's a math teacher. He was high. 35, <laughs> 35 years. Go Key West Cons. <laughs> we use all kinds of baits down here, man. I mean, it, it's endless. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, you know, from a swimming fish to a crawling crab. It's, uh, you know, shrimp. Um, you know, the crabs we use, obviously, you know, more inshore on the wrecks to catch permit. Um, you got to have a crab to catch a permit, and they come in the ocean, so, you know, that's another bait we need to be able to catch or buy. And again, you know, we even use large baits. You know, bonita, that's a bait. Barracuda, man, I'll take a 25-pound barracuda, fillet that thing up, and use it for shark bait. Use the carcass, have him hanging over the side. He draws in the sharks. It's a great tool um, to have in your shark arsenal of tricks. Pinfish, we catch in a trap. Mullet, okay, the only way to catch a mullet is with a cast net. Period. It's, it's, it's it. They don't bite. You know, you can't trap them. It's with a cast net. A mullet is the only bait that I'll tarpon fish with if I'm live bait fishing. Uh, you can sit next to 50 boats, and if they got pinfish, you're going to outfish them I mean, they're going to go home. They're going to pull their anchor and get away from you so they don't have to watch you catch Their clients are really starting to say, hey, man. What's going on? What, what's he's he got, doing different? He, he's got mullet. Something about a mullet and a tarpon. Uh, tarpon can't say no. Herring, you know, you got Spanish sardines, which is an awesome bait. You got cigar minnows, great bait. Um, uh, when sail fishing, it's goggle eyes, sardines, cigar minnows, ballyhoo, blue runners. And there's numerous times where we're in the well. You see it, man. I mean, I'm throwing out a pelcher. He don't get eaten. He's coming off, I'm throwing out a ballyhoo. If he don't get eaten, he's coming off, I'm throwing out, you know, cigar minnow. Sometimes what's not working, you know, just for the just the same as for a freshwater bass fisherman. What's not working with this color might work with this color. It's the same with us. What's not working with this type of bait, live bait, it's gonna work maybe with this other bait. Well, even if you have the live bait, say a pilchard's not working, then you take him, before you give up on a pilchard, you belly hook him. And then he's going to swim down a little deeper. He's going to swim a little different than all the rest of the ones. He's going to shoot, hit the water, and the first move is 10-foot slow spiral. And that, sometimes that's all it takes. It, it's just a lot, a lot of information out there, a lot of different ways to catch this bait, a lot of different baits to catch. And, you know, my advice is watch the birds. The birds are going to put you on bait no matter what kind of bait it is. They're going to show you where the bait is. 
uh, check it out, you know, and, and start practicing that bait catching because that's ultimately going to be what's going to make you a great fisherman. Steve has a great time on the water, and anyone ever, ever, ever gets the opportunity to fish with him, don't, don't be late. You don't want to miss a minute of it. I fish with Steve anytime. I just spent 10 days with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't invite me to his house one time for dinner. I did his laundry. You did my laundry one time. I think he threw some, dirt, threw, threw some dirty socks in there. I mean, she might have. <laughs>